Hello there everybody, Mr. Wilson here again uh, for part 4 of going through this November 2021 paper 2 for the GCSE Further Maths. So if you haven't already, I would definitely consider checking out the other parts because now we're sort of getting towards the middle um, lot of questions in the paper where they start to get more challenging um, and then hopefully um, we will get to the to the end of the paper with the more challenging questions in later parts. So for now, let's have a look at this question then. So question 10. The radius of a sphere is in centimetres is 3k over 2. The volume of the sphere is 7, uh, 972 pi centimetres cubed. They give the volume of a sphere formula and then they say work out the value of k. Okay, well first of all, They've given a formula, so let's use it. Um, the volume is equal to 4 thirds uh, pi r cubed. Now, we're, we're given what the, the radius is, right? They tell us what the radius is, and they tell us what the volume is. So let's just sub those in into our formula. So 972 pi is equal to 4 thirds pi, and then... 3k over 2 cubed. Right? I've just substituted in the volume that we're given and the radius, right? Because the radius is going to go in this slot here, and the volume is going to go in this place here. Now, already there's going to be some cancellation happening because we have pi on both sides of our equation, so we can divide both sides by pi, which means they will cancel out each other out. And we're left with 972 is equal to 4 thirds um, brackets 3k over 2 cubed. Okay, well now we can actually divide by 4 thirds to get rid of this 4 thirds. We can divide by 4 thirds on either side. So divide by 4 thirds, divide by 4 thirds. And obviously 972 divided by 4 thirds well, that's going to be um, a calculator job, so I'm just typing my calculator now, divided by uh, 4 thirds, and that gives me 729. So 729 is equal to 3k over 2, all cubed. Now, there are a few ways of actually solving this. One way would be to kind of expand these brackets. You would cube everything on the inside. So actually, let's do it both ways. Why not? And, and then we can check both ways. So one way, and we'll just sort of draw an arrow down here, would be to, like I said, expand these brackets. So you get, I'm not changing the left-hand side. This would be equal to, um, well, 3k cubed would be 27k cubed over 2 cubed, which is 8. And then you would multiply both sides by 8, because that's going to sort of get rid of this... Um, divide by 8, so you multiply both sides by 8, and you get uh, 5,832 is equal to 27k cubed. Divide both sides by 27, and we get, again, calculator job, divide by 27, we get 216 is equal to k cubed, and then we need to cube root both sides and that's going to give us, uh, so the cube root of, uh, da, 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 cube root of uh, 216 is 6. So 6 is equal to k, k must be 6. The alternative, back up here, the alternative way to solve this equation would be to cube root both sides straight away, because that would get rid of this cubed. So if you cube root both sides straight away, that means you would have to cube root 729, and that gives you 9. So again, like I said, I'm cube rooting both sides straight away here. Um, and on the left-hand side, that's going to be the cube root of 729 is equal to 3k over 2. Because if you cube root this, it's going to get rid of the cube. The cube root of 729 is 9. And that's equal to 3k over 2. You multiply both sides by 2. So you get, if I uh, just scroll down a sec, multiply both sides by 2. And we're going to get 18 is equal to 3k. 
And then by dividing by 3 on both sides, we get 6 is equal to k. So in both cases, we solve, uh, we've worked out that k is equal to 6. So maybe you could have done it both ways. One way for your method that you prefer to do it that way, and then the other way to check. Um, I mean, it's the same sort of idea um, in the solving the equation part. Um, but one of them involves cube rooting right at the end of the of the equation um, to get the method, and one involves cube rooting sort of towards the start. But they both eventually get to the same answer. Um, and by the way, there are alternatives earlier. There, there are different sort of ways of uh, solving this equation earlier on um, in a different order, but all will eventually lead to the same answer. Right then. Move on to question 11. Expand and simplify fully 5x plus 3y squared, close brackets, 4x take away y squared, close brackets. So, double brackets has to be grid method for, for me, or sometimes referred to as the area model. So you draw yourself out a grid. And for something like this, where you've got x's and y's and different letters, the grid method is going to be a really nice way of laying this out. So I put one of my brackets on the top. And I put the other bracket down the side. Now it doesn't matter which way around you write these brackets because at the end of the day we're multiplying and multiplication is commutative so it can be done in any order you want to do it in. 4x times 5x is 20x squared. 4x times a positive 3y squared is going to be positive 12xy squared. Now you could write 12y squared x, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just traditionally we write letters in alphabetical order. Now a negative y squared multiplied by a positive 5x is going to be negative 5xy squared. And then negative y squared multiplied by a positive 3y squared. Well that's going to be negative 3y to the power 4. Because using our laws of indices, y squared multiplied by a y squared you would add the power so it's y to the 4. Now we just need to sort of tidy this up because what we've got here is we've got 20, I mean the answer is 20x squared plus 12xy squared take away 5xy squared take away 3y to the power 4 but if you look closely we've actually got some like terms here. This term here and this term here are like terms they are exactly the same which is why if we look back at the question it doesn't just say expand it says expand and simplify fully because this answer wouldn't be accepted because it's not simplified because we have these like terms so actually reading the question carefully here I knew I was going to get some like terms that I need to simplify at the end because it told me so in the question and that's where this exam technique about reading the question carefully comes in so we've got 20x squared, which we don't need to change. Now, positive 12xy squared, take away 5xy squared. That's going to be plus 7xy squared, take away 3y to the power of 4. And that is the answer to that, fully simplified. So um, I think quite a nice question there. I, I kind of like that question. You know, it's testing to see if you can correctly expand brackets. It's, it's testing to see if you can collect like terms, but obviously, you know, something like this, uh, you won't maybe see something like this at GCC because it combines many different letters, different powers, things like that, but it's the same idea. So if we can expand brackets, you know, the very simple ones, same idea, same method, but slightly more complicated term. Okay, we'll probably finish on this question because this one's a five marker, so we'll finish on, off uh, this question in this part. A and B are points on the line Y equals 3X plus 2. B, C and D are points on the line L. O, A is in the ratio to A, C, 1 to 4. And the question says, work out the X coordinate of B. Okay, five marks. So a lot of things going on here. First thing, it's really nice that they've drawn a diagram. If they didn't, I would have probably drawn one anyway, but it's nice that they give us this. I mean, first thing I would do is I would put the coordinate of D next to the diagram just so I remember that that is the coordinate 5 0. Now first thing we can actually work out is what the coordinate of A is because 
If a is on the line, y equals 3x plus 2. Well, remember, every single line is in the form y equals mx plus c. Now the m, well that is the gradient of the line, and the c part, this plus c part, that is the y-intercept. It's where it crosses the y-axis. So if this is the line here, y equals 3x plus 2, then a is on the y-axis. So it must be the y-intercept. And in this case, it must be the coordinate um, 0, 2, right? Because the y-intercept is 2, and it's on the y-axis, so the x-coordinate is 0. Okay, now that we know the coordinate of A, well, the coordinate of C is going to be easy to work out, because remember, we're told that um, OA to AC is in the ratio 1 to 4. So that means that this distance here is in the ratio 1 to 4 with this distance here. So if this distance here is 2, because it's, the coordinate is 0, 2, then this distance here must be 8. So the total Y coordinate of C must be 10. It must be the coordinate 0, 10 because right, it's the 2 plus the 8, so it must be 0, 10 for the coordinate of C. Now from here we can work on working out what the what line L actually is, as sort of an equation, because we have two points that are on the line, we have C and we have D, so we can work out the gradient of this line L. So the gradient is equal to the change in Y, divided by the change in x. Now going from c to d it goes down by 10 so the change in y is 10 because it goes from 10 to 0 it goes down by 10 and the change in the x coordinate it goes from 0 to 5 so it's negative 10 divided by 5 which is negative 2. So in other words line L has the equation y equals negative 2x plus c well, we know what the y-intercept is because C is on the y-axis and it's on line L. So the y-intercept is 10. So the equation of line L is y equals negative 2x plus 10. So we're sort of getting really close to getting the coordinate of B. Right then, the final part of this question then is to come to the realisation that B is the intersection of these two lines. Now, if you have a point of intersection between two lines then you are looking for the point where both these lines are equal to each other because that's where they cross over they must be equal so this implies that 3 uh, 3x plus 2 is equal to minus 2x plus 10 right because these are the the basically what you're saying is that the y coordinates are the same for both these lines, so you can make both equations equal to each other by adding 2x to both sides, because that's going to get sort of get rid of the, the negative 2x. We're going to get 5x plus 2 is equal to 10. Then we could subtract 2 from both sides, and we get 5x is equal to 8. And then by dividing by 5 on both sides, we get x is equal to 8 over 5, or 1.6 depending on how you want to uh, write this. So the, the x coordinate of b is 1.6. Now if you want to find the y coordinate or if they ask you to find the full coordinate you would just go and substitute 1.6 into either y equals 3x plus 2 or y equals minus 2x plus 10 and it should give you the same answer for both so you could sub it into both and check um, but that would be if you wanted the y coordinate as well but this question only asks for the x coordinate and that's how we would get it. So I think quite a complicated question this one. There's a lot of sort of moving parts, there's a lot of things you have to think about. We've got a ratio in there, we've got you know calculating the gradient between two points, we've got the realization of how we interpret y equals mx plus c, you know lots of different things going on here and then we have to solve an equation with x on both sides and we have to do that algebraically. So lots and lots of different moving parts in this question. I think for a mid paper question this is quite a tricky question. Um, I mean they reward heavily with five marks but I think overall I think this question is um, an interesting one, very interesting, um, but it does take a lot of thinking about to sort of get it right. 
So that's going to wrap up this part then. Um, I hope this part has been uh, useful for you. I hope um, you know you're looking at or you've watched this explanation and it's and it's helped you in some way. I mean, there's been lots of positive comments on on previous videos that I've done um, saying that my explanations are quite good. So I, I really really value those um, those nice comments, and I um, I hope it has really helped. Um, but all I need to say is. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.